Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about ventricular tachycardia. So before going into the actual topic, we should know there are two types of tachycardia. So any tachycardia or any tachyarrhythmia is either divided into a broad complex tachycardia or a narrow complex tachycardia. So before that, you should know what is normal QRS. So this, this is a normal QRS. This occurs because of ventricular depolarization. That is, it denotes the time or waves during uh, when there is a when ventricle is contracting so whenever the ventricle is contracting the electrical activity which is detected is represented by qrs complex now the normal qrs complex is less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small squares of ecg so that means if your ventricle is normal or ventricle is normal the entire ventricle will depolarize in less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small square time so now, how will you differentiate a broad complex tachycardia or a narrow complex tachycardia? So now, if you have any defect in the ventricles, for example, if this part is infarcted or this part is not working properly, so now what will happen? So electric depolarization will pass through all these things. So this part will start contracting, this part will start contracting, but this part which is defective will contract a little slower. So the entire ventricle will now take more time to contract or depolarize, and that's leads to what? That's why there will be broad QRS complex. The QRS will get broadened. So any defect in ventricles, which is leading to tachyarrhythmia, is called as ventricular tachycardia or broad complex tachycardia. Or any tachycardia, which is because of lesion above the levels of ventricle. That is, if your ventricles is normal or the defect is above the level of ventricle, that is in your atrium and all, then it will lead to a narrow complex tachycardia. So detail in approach to narrow complex tachycardia has been uploaded in my previous video. You can go through that. Now we'll go into the topic ventricular tachycardia. So it is a most common cause of broad complex tachycardia. Approximately 80% of uh, cases of broad complex tachycardia is because of ventricular tachycardia. So and there are various different types of uh, VT. So is either called as monomorphic VT. Monomorphic VT is that when the morphology of the all the QRS is similar. So all the QRS, if you have same morphology, then it's called monomorphic. Polymorphic means if the morphology is varying. So one QRS is small this wave and the other one is more deep. One other one is more small. And if it is varying, then it is called as polymorphic. And other types is star side is deep point is where polymorphic VT is associated with QT prolongation, fascicular tachycardia, bidirectional VT. So now in VT, there are two types again based on the duration. It's called as sustained VT or non-sustained VT. So sustained VT is that any ventricular tachycardia which is persisting for more than 30 seconds. It is called a sustained VT or any VT which is leading to hemodynamic real compromise. And that's why you have to intervene before 30 seconds. That also will be included in sustained VT. That means that key, because of hemodynamic compromise, you have intervened. Otherwise, this VT would have also would have continued for more than 30 seconds. So even that is labeled as sustained VT. What do you mean by non-sustained VT is that if there are three or more consecutive ventricular complexes, as you can see here, these are ventricular complexes. You can see one, two, three, four. There are four ventricular complexes, but it is subsiding normally on its own. Like within 30 seconds, if they subside normally to the normal sinus rhythm, it's called as non-sustained VT. Based on clinical presentation type, it's of two types, hemodynamically stable and hemodynamically unstable. So what do you mean by hemodynamically unstable is that any patient who is having a decreased conscious level or whose BP is low as in hypotension or complaining of symptoms like breathlessness, chest pain, then it will be labeled as hemodynamically unstable. Why it is important to differentiate uh, hemodynamically stable and hemodynamically unstable is that because the treatment varies in both of them. Mechanism of ventricular tachycardia, the most common mechanism being re-entry. We'll not go into much detail in mechanism uh, in our video. Now, now, once this is VT, what you should differentiate is from the, you should differentiate from the other causes of broad complex tachycardia. So what are the other causes of broad complex tachycardia? Is most common differential diagnosis of ventricular tachycardia is supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. So let, what will happen in supraventricular cardiac with aberrancy? Now we are saying supraventricular tachycardia. As I've already discussed, any tachycardia which is uh, arising because of defect in supraventricular region, that is, for example, if there is defect here, so in supraventricular tachycardia, there is defect in the right atrium. There is some ectopic focus and all because of this, there is SVT is happening. But along with SVT, for assume if you have a, some bundle branch block, for example, if this all this SVT, that is, if we are atrial bleeding at 180 or 190, 200 times, so because of this bundle branch block, there is a, some block here. So because of this block, what will happen is that this part will contract normally. 
whereas this part of the heart will take some more time to contract so because of that the qrs duration gets more prolonged and patient will present with broad complex tachycardia so even though it is svt it is called as because of aberrancy in the bundle branch there will be svt with aberrancy and broad complex tachycardia that is a most common differential diagnosis for svt with aberrancy so very broad complex if your qrs morphology is more than 160 milliseconds it is goes in more in favor of bt absence of typical rbbb or lbbb morphology as already said this right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block should be present in svt with aberrancy so if any patient who have a previous ecg or a norm previous ecg prior to this episode showing rbbb or lbbb that goes more in favor of bt presence of extreme axis deviation more in favor of bt and presence of ab dissociation so what do you mean by ab dissociation is that there is a dissociation between p and qrs that is atrium will contract independently and the ventricles will contract independently and there is no association between atria and ventricle and that is it is called as ab dissociation so if there is p waves are forming but there is no relationship with the qrs it is called as ab dissociation and if it is present it is more in favor of ventricular tachycardia then there is presence of capture beat or fusion beats so what do you mean by capture beat is that when vt is occurring in between if there is a beat which is coming from the sinus node so you can see here this is a sinus node that is a p, sinus node showing a p wave then normal qrs normal t wave so in between vt if you get anything like this there is a normal uh, morphology of the ecg or normal beat you get that is called as capture beat and if this is present this is has to be 100% ventricular tachycardia so this is also a differentiating feature between svt with aberrancy and vt other feature is fusion beat fusion beat is nothing but as a combination of a capture beat there is a normal beat and a ventricular tachycardia beat so if both of this combined the resultant one will be a combination of both of them that is a, a completely different morphology when compared to a capture beat or normal then the vt qrs is this is called as fusion beat so both of these features are suggestive of ventricular tachycardia other features which is important is that ki how will you differentiate right bundle branch block from the vt is that ki in ventricular tachycardia also there could be a, you can see there is an m pattern here as well. there is a r large r with a bifurcation here you can see okay and here in when in rbb you can see that there is a bifurcation and that is why is that so in ventricular tachycardia generally the left side so the first initial part is more taller than the second part that is more in favor of vt in rbbb the first part is smaller and the second part is larger so you can see there is a small one and and this is a larger one so right side if it is larger that is goes in more in favor of rbbb other two signs which is suggestive of vt is brogada sign what do you mean by brogada sign is that at the s wave if there is a notch so this is an r wave and this is s wave. and if you found a notch s wave this is called as brogada sign and what is josephson sign josephson sign is nothing but that is a duration of rs interval that is starting of r to end of s if in between uh, the distance is more than 100 milliseconds or more than 2.5 small squares the distance between this and this is more than 100 milliseconds or more than two and a half small squares then it is called a josephson sign which is more in favor of ventricular tachycardia and likelihood of vt is also increased if your age is more than 35 because svt supraventricular tachycardia is generally seen in young patients and if there is a structural heart disease or any patient who have a ischemic heart disease or any patient with a family history of sudden cardiac death this all goes more in favor of vt likelihood of svt with aberrancy is high if there is a previous any ecg which is showing a bundle branch block as i have already discussed if any ecg has a bundle branch block previously or ecg showing evidence of wpw is goes in more in favor of svt with aberrancy and also any patient if you giving an issue of tachycardia which is arrhythmia or palpitation which is subsiding on its own or that have successfully terminated with adenosine or vagal maneuvers because svt will respond to adenosine or vagal maneuvers but the ventricular tachycardia will not respond to adenosine so any tachycardia which has a given history that it has responded to adenosine it is goes in favor of svt with aberrancy because vt will never respond with vagal maneuvers or adenosine most common cause of monomorphic vt is ischemic heart disease other causes being dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy this is a ecg of monomorphic vt differential diagnosis of regular broad complex tachycardia three diagnosis one is vt supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy and supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction due to wolf parkinson white syndrome where there is an accessory pathway formed between the atrium and the ventricle so they normally bypasses this sa node av node 
and uh, there is accessory pathway connecting atria directly with the ventricle so now uh, management of pulseless vt in will be management of vt will be talking in very brief uh, overall view that is any patient is, if you, you have seen an ecg is showing vt so first you thing you need to do is to check whether there is a pulse or not if there is no pulse it is considered as emergency and you should immediately sh give shock shock with an unsynchronized defibrillation there is no need to sync here you should give unsynchronized defibrillation with 150 to 200 joules biphasic so if there is that means patient is not responding you should by simultaneously continue with cpr with minimal interruption in 30 to 2 and you can you have to give adrenaline every 3 minutes amiodron uh, after the third shock you have to give amiodron 300 mg and you have to exclude all the reversible causes which could have lead to vt that is 5h and 5ts what is 5h and 5t that is a reversible cause of cardiac arrest this has to be found this 5h is hypovolemia which is decrease in volume status hypoxia acidosis hyper or hypokalemia hypothermia similarly 5t is toxins uh, cardiac tamponade tension pneumothorax pulmonary thrombosis and coronary thrombosis now assume the patient is uh, hemodynamic unstable vt that is pulse is there but patient bp is low or something like that then also the immediate thing you need to do is you need to give shock but since bp is present pulse is present it has to be given synchronized shock okay synchronized dc shock you will give 50 joules and then you can continue either amiodron infusion or consider lignocaine sotalol or procanamide in hemodynamic stable patient there is there is palpitation but the bp is normal patient is not breathless and all you can this is uh, still a medical emergency because it can any time degenerate into an unstable vt so you have to anyways uh, start her, start the patient on amiodron or sotalol if the patient is not responding then you have to definitely go for cardioversion let us go to some revision and questions wise what is ventricular tachycardia is defined as so ventricular tachycardia is defined as any uh, tachycardia which is showing more than 3 or consecutive vpcs at a rate of more than 100 so more than 100 beats is sufficient more than 3 consecutive vpcs at a rate of more than 100 is called as ventricular tachycardia so how will you differentiate it from the accelerated idioventricular rhythm which is seen in patients with uh, uh, what is called as patients with mi after reperfusion like after thrombolysis you see the rhythm called as accelerated idioventricular rhythm which will be showing you so if there is more three more than three consecutive vpcs at a rate of more than 100 is called as vt if there is more or three more than equal to three consecutive vpcs at a rate of less than 100 is called as accelerated idioventricular rhythm i'll show you here so this is accelerated idioventricular rhythm where you can see is that if there are more than three qrs is two ventricular rhythm but the rate is less than 100 if this rate is more than 100 it will go in favor of vt so again second question is what is sustained vt sustained vt is defined as vt that persists for 10 seconds 15 seconds 25 seconds and 30 seconds so as as we already discussed sustained vt is anything which is persisting for more than 30 seconds duration of more than 30 seconds is sustained vt less than 30 seconds is non sustained vt So all of the field, following features differentiate VT and supraventricular tachycardia, except. So let us go each by each. QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds. No, because uh, none of this, uh, either neither ventricular tachycardia nor supraventricular tachycardia will have QRS of less than 120. Ventricular rate of more than 100 is seen in both. Relieved by carotid sinus massage. Okay. So uh, carotid sinus massage. Uh, we are only talking about supraventricular tachycardia, not aberrant. So in supraventricular tachycardia, it's coming above the level ventricle. Your ventricle is normal. So QRS will be less than 120 in supraventricular tachycardia. It will be more than 120 in ventricular tachycardia. Heart rate will be 100 in both of them. So you cannot differentiate based on heart rate. Relieved by carotid sinus massage. So carotid sinus massage will relieve only supraventricular tachycardia, but there will be no effect in VT. So answer is ventricular rate more than 100 beats per minute. So broad complex ventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia the rate is similar in both qrs duration is more than 120 in broad complex and less than 120 uh, it cannot be relieved with carotid sinus massage it can be relieved with carotid sinus massage as you can see this is a narrow complex and this is a broad complex the patients with wide complex tachycardia presence of all of the following in ecg indicates ventricular tachycardia except as i already told you ventricular tachycardia there will be ab dissociation that is Uh, p have a, will have no relation with qrs there will be presence of fusion bit and presence of capture bit 
okay typical rbbb is not a feature of ventricular tachycardia it a feature of svt with aberrancy so this is feature that so features of suggestive vt is again very broad complexes absence of typical rbbb or albbb av dissociation presence of capture beat fusion beats garda sense and joseph sense okay so this is again revising again this is a capture bit this is a fusion bit this is garda sense there is a notch of srf rs interval more than 100 is joseph sense hope you have liked my video if you have any comment or anything you want to know uh, do do it in my comment box uh, if you have any other query please let me know uh, and do subscribe to my youtube channel for for more for more interesting videos thank you